Hey everyone, this is Nick for PokerVIP.com, otherwise known as Crazy Cookie on the PokerVIP forums. And today I'm going to be doing episode 4 of my Learning to Crush 15 Minutes at a Time series. And we're going to be looking at uh, a ton of different board textures and whether they're going to suit the PFR or the preflop caller more. And from that, whether we should be seabedding a lot as the PFR or calling quite a bit as the preflop uh, caller. Uh, so far in this series, we have gone through how to maximize your 15 minute CV. This is really important, and I think you should be watching this video before this one if you haven't. And it's one that I would encourage everyone to go back and uh, re watch every now and again because it really helps you uh, understand how to go through this series, how to get the most out of your sessions, how to track your progress. A lot of really important stuff in there, and I definitely encourage everybody to go and watch that uh, um, more than once and definitely before this, this episode if you haven't already. And in the previous two, we've taken one specific spot and we've looked at a GTO um, estimate approach and an exploitative approach. Um, and today we're going to be going for a slightly less detailed view and a more how can we look at a lot of different board textures and begin to get a sense post swap of knowing when to see bet and when not to see bet and not just you know looking at our opponent's stats. Software in this episode, we're going to be using Combinator again. Um, and we're going to be using Poker Stove as well. I believe that Poker Stove um, has, the last time I checked, the, the actual site has gone, uh, which is a shame, but there are a number of different uh, sources where you can download the most recent um, piece of software. So if you can get a hold of that, that's great. You can use Flopzilla or other equity calculator uh, software for this. I use Poker Stove because it's really simple. So here are the 12 board textures. Um, I'm gonna go into where I got these from in a second, but just to talk you through the idea of this is that these, these 12 board textures pretty much cover a ton of situations you're gonna face post-op. You're gonna face a board texture like this where you have one high card and two low cards and it's completely unconnected. You're gonna find um, a board like this, which is ace high, it's got a flush draw, it's got multiple um, Broadway draws, um and, uh, and yeah <laughs> you're gonna find these kind of boards with a couple of medium cards which can create some straight draws but other than that no flush draws paired boards um lower boards with flush draws this covers a lot of different board textures you can face um and the idea is simply that using the information we learned from today you're going to find very similar situations and you're not going to have to think as much about them if you think pre-flop play, we don't have to think about our opening range from the cutoff in a, an anonymous game because we just have our cutoff range and we use it, right? The idea being that post-flop, if we can do the same where it's a case of this board, Jack 2-6 comes down, we know that this is profitable to bet on and we don't really need to think about it. We're saving a lot of our mental capacity for tougher spots. Um, so that's, that's the concept of this. I'm now going to sort of like have a look and see where I got these from. Um, I first saw like, I think the first place I ran into this was on this forum here, uh, which is a journey uh, da, uh, created by No Justice, No Peace. Um, this was posted a few months ago. And he mentions here that um, one of the ways he studies is he inserts 12 uh, flop categories, which is the 12 flop, flop categories I've got here. Um, Da, da, da. He he then looks at this sort of like the equity advantage, and if he has a five percent uh, equity advantage, he should be betting and raising uh, more than checking and calling. Um, I think this is a really good simple approach. We're going to go into a little bit more detail today and look a little bit more into well, okay, we haven't actually got an equity advantage here, but we have a ton of fold equity, so therefore it can still be a bet. Um, but this is a very very easy way of doing this. You can effectively just plug these twelve flop categories into um, an equity calculator, but your range and villain's range, and from that be like, oh, I have an equity advantage here. That's pretty cool. Um, and then this is the video he refers to. Um, feel free to copy and paste this link here uh, and just to, to listen uh, to, to this. Um, again, these are the board textures, and he pretty much just goes through how, pretty much what I just said, and, and using each board texture and being able to make it more like your preflop game where you just know what to do on this these type of board textures and don't have to really think about it okay so this is a very messy screen and i apologize for that but there's going to be a lot going on um here's our 15 minute timer 
here are our different board textures. I'm going to be really ambitious and try and go through the first five or six. I'm not sure if we're going to do that. To make it make it slightly easier on myself, I'm going to use the same um, pre-flop situation. So here in the button opens and the big blind calls. Um, in the next episode, I'll go through another five or six and we'll choose a different scenario. And potentially after this series, uh, when we, we look at the sort of like what we can do further, we may just say, right, we're going to pick five random situations and, and use this and use some other things as well. Um, but yeah, this is really just to show you how I would uh, spend this 15 minute study session. Uh, and like I said, you may want to spend a couple more minutes on each board texture. You may only want to do two or three every 15 minutes, um, but it, that's completely, completely up to you what works best for you. Um, so yeah, here we have uh, in Combinator, Hero's button opening range. This will of course change based on um, the blinds. I've just put in kind of like what I would use in an anonymous game where I don't know anything about my opponent. 50% um, of hands were opening, I think that's absolutely fine. Can be a little bit wider, it'll depend on how you play. And then I've put in the big blinds um, expected defending range. Uh, the cards missing up here are going to be free bets. Some of these they could call some of the time. I'm not going to include that in there this time because just to keep it really simple for me while I'm explaining to you. But you may, for example, take ace queen and ace queen suited and pocket jacks and say they call those 30% of the time or whatever. Um, same with some of these, the ace two and ace three suited. I'm saying that the ace two for ace five, they're going to free bet a certain amount of the time and they're going to call to some of the time. So we're just including some of the ace x uh, in here. So yeah, um, let me just grab as well, um, poker stove. I've got that ready on my other screen because it's already got some information on it, which I want to share a little bit later on. Um, and I'm just going to use poker stove to sort of like show how our range compares to villain's range. But yeah, without any further ado, let's get started and hopefully this will start first time. Yes. Okay. So this is the board situation. Um, Jack two, six rainbow. And the way I do this is I look at villain's range first and I and I do what I did in the last few episodes where I've gone, okay, or the last episode rather, okay, what are his really strong hands? Twos and sixes make a top set. Um, and then all of his top pair hands are not going to be folding either. We're then not going to see 10, 9, 8, 7 fold all of the time. Um, and his 6x and maybe ace 2 off as well. So these are the hands which I think are potentially going to call with, um, you know, with, I wouldn't say 100% of the time, but probably 80, 90% of the time he's going to call when he has these type of hands. Um, and we can already see that he's got 69% of hands which don't have a pair here. So it's going to be very clearly a c-bet. Um, if we then look at sort of like hands which he could potentially use as floats, and if we're in a big blind that we're probably going to have to begin using as floats, um, I take the best hands which can improve. So King Queen have two overcards and some backdoors. Queen Ten, King Ten have some some uh, an overcards can turn second pair which may be good. Uh, can turn some straight draws, um, and then also when we have um, any kind of backdoor flush draw, so uh, jacks, spades, and hearts in this instance, um, and we say we have the backdoor nut flush draw. 10-9, um, 10, 10 maybe. These kind of hands are potential uh, calls because they're just going to improve enough of the time um, that we're going to be able to um, check raise a turn, lead turn, check call turn, whatever. And maybe include king nine and queen nine seeds, but we're really now clutching its draws as to the, the, the worst of the best, or the best of the worst hands which we can continue with. And you can see that even when we've included all of these back doors, all of these sort of like two over cards and whatever to, to just check call because we're not check raising this ball very often. We're still folding a massive 45.4% of the time. So I think this is a very clear C bet on this board. So that's the information I've got from it. If we use poker stove and we plug in, um, uh, this is hero's range up here and this is villain's range. You can see that the equity advantage is actually, there isn't one. I mean, it's, it's pretty much 50-50. You can do this a few times and you'll probably come up with this sort of number. Um, so it's a it's 50 50 equity advantage. And on the flop, equity advantage doesn't really mean as much purely because, like, we can we can simply say we're getting 45% of fold. So when we have a hand like uh, Jack 4, or not Jack 4 because that's got a pair, when we've got a hand like, I don't know, um, A6 off, A5 off, um, 
we can see bet knowing that okay we've got an overcard but we've got very little equity with that hand but at the same time we're getting 45 percent of folds which is awesome um, i'm not going to go into it today but you could then say well okay post slop what uh what uh, sorry on the turn what turn cards are good for our range what turn cards are good for villain's range um but we're just doing flop texture for now so let's clear that clear all of that let's put in the next scenario where we have um, the uh, Ace Jack Nine board, much more interesting board. Um, the conclusion we, we took away from the first board texture, of course, is we're going to see bet it a lot with our bluffs. Now let's have a look at the second uh, board texture, and uh, here we can put in a few more nutted combos. So Ace Nine, Ace Jack. These are all fairly strong. Top two pair. Jack Nines also pretty strong. So that's 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 straight away. He's got all those nutted hands in his range. We then look at the top pair combos. He has all of these. And this is why ace high boards are not always great to begin bluffing on because our opponent likely has top pair quite a lot of the time. And you can see that already, just looking at the top pair and the nutted combos, we're already up to 35% um, of, of continue. people are going to continue. Uh, if we then look at other strong combos, so when he has a jack, We're now up to 45%. This is just second pair. And then we say when he has a 9, maybe he calls some of the time. So we'll include some of his 9x combos. And then whenever he has some sort of like uh, draw, so queen 10 has a straight draw. Uh, I think queen 9 is gonna, actually going to call. And king 9 is going to call. 10 9 is probably going to call. So yeah, king, queen 10 has got a, a, a straight draw. 10-8 uh, has got a straight draw. And now we just need to go into heart combos, and all of these have got flush draws. Some of them have got um, other, other other draws going for them. So now we're getting to the point where we're only getting 36% folds, and we haven't even got into the slightly more you know potential calls. So whenever he has any kind of any kind of heart, so if we take these um, combos here, and he has king ten and king queen, and to be honest, pocket tens are probably going to call as well. So we're getting into a situation where we're just not getting a lot of folds on this board texture. You can see that the folds we are getting are two through eight. We're getting 31% of folds, and that's possibly even a little bit high, a little bit high. We're probably looking at under 30% folds, and therefore, simply put, it's not a board texture um, we want to be um, we want to be c betting on with all of our all of our hands. If we were to look at um, the equity distribution, uh, let me just plug in the um, uh, board texture on poker stove you can see here the player two or the big blind actually has a pretty much a five percent equity advantage um against us so this is a board texture where we if we were the big blind we want to be check raising more donking more um check raising probably better than check calling um because we have a massive equity advantage against our opponent assuming they bet their entire range however if the button is in any way, uh, shape, or form thinking about this, he would understand that he does not want to be betting with all of his trashy hands. So he's probably only going to be betting, you know, the top part of his range. Uh, obviously, his value hands, and then his stronger flush draws. So if you were to put that into the focus over, I'm not going to do it now because I've, we're, we're go, trying to go through this really quickly. But if you put that into uh, focus over, you're probably going to find that against our c betting range if we cut out all of the crappy hands and we've just got flush draws uh two pairs strong top pairs um you know uh, our straight draws if we only put in hands where we have good equity the equity advantage is probably going to change fairly significantly um so from this board it's very clear that we want to be c betting when we have a strong hand and when we have um a hand with decent amount of equity because this way villain even though he's going to be continuing you know, a, a very high percentage of the time, 60, probably 70% of the time, we have got enough equity that that 31.5% fold equity or, or, you know, 25, 30% fold equity included with our, however much equity we have with our, with our range with flush draws, backdoor flush draws, straight draws, makes it a profitable bet. So it's not a board we want to be see betting on with, with crappy hands, but it is when we have equity. We're going through this a little bit too slowly, which I didn't think would be possible. Um, so now we've put in a, a another, this is again going to be a drier uh, texture. 10-7-3. Um, Villain does have uh, all the sets. Um, he also has a, a fair few top pair combos. Um, 
and of course he does have uh, oh let's undo that because it's gonna screw us up let's can we just do that and then have no let's see uh, yeah that worked fine um he's also gonna have hands like this that he's gonna continue with second pair um and then he's also got eight nine um no oh, nine seven is gonna be cool sorry it's gonna have hands like eight nine um uh, jack nine queen nine eight six five four six five and and these are put in here as well, whatever you know he's gonna he's got actually quite a few hands that call and we can see that this is already up to 37 and a half without including you know when he has um a backdoor flush draw so that's going to be spades hearts and diamonds and two over cards um which are going to be you know the, these kind of combos that they, these are all going to be decent calls you can see that we're not we're probably not going to get as many folds here we're still going to get quite a few and it's probably a board texture which we are going to be looking to bet on quite a lot because and this is this is where we can now begin to already look at the turn we can see here that only four percent of his continuing range is nutted and then okay if we're looking at 32 percent of his range is top pair or better um and um what have we got here 32 57 so we're looking at over 40 percent of his range has not got second pair on the turn so on a blank turn we can begin to barrel purely because we know that villain hasn't got very many top pair combos now he hasn't got many very many second pair combos and if he's out of position he does not want to be check calling with you know ace highs and straight draws even a turned flush draw if you if you bet you know seventy percent on the turn and he has queen jack of spades and the spain uh, the two of spades comes on the turn, it's like it's probably going to be profitable if we have all bluffs, but if we don't have all of our bluffs in that range and we have some flush draws in there ourselves, it makes that queen jack suited become pretty close to being a profitable call. It probably is, but it's pretty close. Um, so this is a board texture where I begin to say, well, the flop, we're probably going to get enough folds there or thereabouts to make it profitable with anything. Maybe you drop the very lowest equity hands from your range. Um, and on the turn, we can then begin betting quite a bit because Villain has called the flop with a variety of weaker hands or he's had to call the flop with a variety of weaker hands for the flop bet not to be profitable. Um, and then this is also a board where it's awesome if an overcard comes on a turn or the river because okay he does have these hands here but they don't make up a huge portion of his range they only make up um, you know 35% of his range or so and that means that 60% of the time he doesn't have top pair on the turn or the river and if you triple barrel people are not going to begin calling down all that often with second pair um, or, or, or second or third pair or, or whatever it is calling down three streets and we're going to be c betting two over cards, so we've got all of those in our range anyway. So it's a good board to look at barreling off. We have got to be careful, I guess, of the six and the jack and the nine and the eight because it will complete top uh, two pair combos, a few more set combos, straights. Obviously, it'll bring in more straight draws. If it's the eight of spades, it's a particularly bad card to begin just bluffing everything on because he's got you know backdoor flush draws. He's made some straight draws. He's now got some extra gut shots. He's got some extra two pairs, maybe even extra sets. So. This is a board texture, I would say. See bet on fairly liberally and continue on, on dry turns and turns that improve our equity. Do not continue on turns that can make this sort of like weaker part of his calling range um, strengthen it because we're not going to get the folds. Um, next board texture is a paired board. Uh, oh, we didn't do the... Hang on, let's put in the... Um, um, uh, seven of hearts, three of diamonds... Um, doesn't look like we're going to get through all that many uh, board textures today. Uh, so we can see actually here that again, we are down in terms of equity. You know, we, we have an equity disadvantage. So it is a board where you might say we want to stop betting all of our really low equity hands. But at the same time, we did see that we're probably going to get in a, enough folds to make it profitable. And it's more looking at the turn and how on a blank turn, he will have a huge proportion of hands which have nothing and therefore have to check fold. Um, and to be honest, you can even get into situations on these board, these board textures where you get to the river and again, villain doesn't have a massively strong range. Two minutes 24, can we get this final board texture done? Let's have a look, or this will be the final board texture in this episode, I suppose. Um, 
So obviously, every time he has a king, we need to be wary of that. And he does have quite a few king x ray hands in, in this range. Pocket freeze, and then all of his pocket pairs are potential calls. This is actually a board texture I found recently that people check raise on a lot. And I don't really understand that, but it seems to work. And I guess that the reason is, is because people say, well, he's seabedding everything. Um, and therefore, I'm just going to check raise knowing that it's profitable. Uh, so I found personally in games recently that this is a perfect board to delay seabet, just based on how opponents uh, change their game up. The reason for that is, like, if you if you, if you you check back the flop um, and villain then checks, he probably bets his um you know he, he's king x and it, he's unlikely to then all of a sudden go check check raise it's just not a it's not a it's not a particularly uh, common line to be that strong um if we do elect to go for the you know and i would definitely suggest to trial this and see how it goes if you do go for the sea bedding uh sea bedding the flop a lot because we're expecting to fold a lot well assuming that he calls every time he has a pair and then sometimes as well when he has like queen jack and whatever because he thinks that's going to be good some, enough of the time well we can see that he's not folding a huge amount of the time but these queen x are quite close um and we just again get to a situation where on the turn and the river he's only got 20 percent of his range uh as 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 trips you know so if you triple barrel this and make a big bet on the river, it doesn't even need to be a big bet on the river. He's going to have to call down three streets with an ace for it to be profitable. Um, if we very quickly put in the uh, equity distribution, have a look. We're going to see that this is actually a spot where the big blind has a massive equity advantage against us range v range. And this is this is an interesting one. Um, and this is where I think the whole looking at equity advantages is kind of not pointless on the flop. It's, it's interesting to know, but it's a little bit not too helpful because it's more the fold equity combined with our equity, which is what we should be looking at. Uh, and we've seen on a lot of board textures as we run out of time. Yeah. Um, I'll just quickly finish this sentence off. We've seen a lot of board textures where we haven't got a very high equity against our opponent. We, we've got an equity disadvantage. It's likely because, you know, our opening range uh, consists, we, we just have more lower equity hands. Like like Jack-5 suited on this board texture um, is not doing great when our opponent has a lot more queen. He has, he has, as a proportion to his range, he has way more ace x, queen x, and better jack x. You know, if we put in those hands, we can see that group three and four um, make up 50% of his range. So 50% of his range beats jack four, even though that's, you know, in the middle of our range. So that, that's, that's the reason the equity distribution is, done, is, is, is looking like that. Um, but we've also seen on board textures where we've got enough fold equity, simply that it doesn't matter how much equity our hand has, we're just getting enough folds on the flop. If we're getting 40% folds on the flop, we can see bet with pretty much you know zero equity and it's profitable. Um, and if we're saying, well, we're only getting 35% of flop uh, folds on the flop, well, as long as we've got 10% equity or 15, 20% equity, it's going to be a profitable C bet. So the one thing I would say a massive takeaway from this is to look at the board texture and say, well, we're not getting a huge amount of folds on the flop. So therefore, I want to make sure when I am betting that I have some equity to fall back on. If it's a board texture where it's like, I'm getting a lot of folds here, you can bet everything. Um, you don't need to worry about balance. You don't need to worry about anything like that. It's just a case of, I'm getting 40% folds. I can bet just over 50% pot. Or you can even actually, and this, this is the cool thing as well. Pe people say, well, if I have no equity, I don't want to bet pot there because I'm losing money because I'm not getting the folds. With that exact hand, yes. But with our entire range, no, because we will just have, you know, on, on that jack high board, for example, we had all of the over pairs. We have more, we have more top pair combos. So when he calls a pot size bet against our range with a jack, it's probably actually not doing that great. So it's another thing just to think about. Um, but the main thing here, as I've said way too many times now, is look at the board texture, how often someone is folding, then begin to say, well, okay, we're getting enough folds to make anything bet, anything profitable, any C bet profitable. What about the equity advantage? Well, okay, he's got a slight equity advantage, but we're, our fold equity is helping us out. So yeah, we went through, in the end, what was that, four board textures? Um, so we've got a couple, we've got a couple left um, to to get in. 
Um, we've got, let's see, we, we today did all of these. So what I'll do is I'll put a strike through these. Um, we may end up having, we may, we may change this lineup and have part two and part three, go through four more in four different situations and four in the last four in another situation. Um, but I would definitely suggest you do this yourself. Take take one board texture and look at you know six or seven different situations: early position versus mid position, early position versus button, um, or do it like I did and look at one one particular spot. So button versus big blind is a spot we get into quite a lot because we open a lot and we defend a lot. And look at it from both our angles and say, okay, if I'm in the big blind, how should I be playing this board texture? If I'm in the button, how should I be playing this board texture? If you do this for 15 minutes every day for a month, I mean. <laughs> you're, you're going to be playing and you're going to be like okay so this board texture means that i'm, I'm going to get a lot of folds here because i know that villain is uh, the, the the speed you'll be able to think of that is is going to be a massive advantage and it's so simple you saw like i did four there really quickly and simply in 15 minutes if you do that every day for a month you are going to absolutely crush um so yeah this has been nick for poker vip um check out all the stuff we're doing on the forums we're doing some some fun stuff um, and yeah, I'll see you next time.